Well, welcome back. How are you feeling? I feel great. I feel good. What have you been up to since we've seen you last? Training, acquiring more skill set to match up with my physicality. Nothing fun. Every time I ask somebody, I, I want them to say like they went on vacation or something. <laughs> Nobody ever does anything no fun. No vacation, you know? Just got to keep building on, you know? I started this sport late, so I had no time to rest. Got to keep on acquiring that skill set. You can't stop learning. Can you talk to me about this matchup? What do you think of your opponent? Oh, it was improved. It's a vet. He's been around a long time in the old dog, you know? He has a whole bunch of skills up his sleeve. And um, I just can't take him lightly. You know, these vets, they have so many tricks. And one thing you can't purchase is experience. And um, that's something I have to be dialed in, tuned in, and making sure I'm on my P's and Q's. And I know you're coming off a loss, but they always say that there's no loss if you learn something. Yes. What did you learn from your last fight? Um, more experience, you know, living in the moment. You know, I'm trying to, like, not just show up, but show out, you know, and have fun. It's, it's not just a job. It's what I chose, the path I chose. So make it happen. Just have fun. What are you expecting? What sort of fight are you expecting from OSP? Um, it's going to be explosive fight because he's very explosive, you know. He has a lot of fast twitch muscle fiber, so he likes to explode into things. And what's mine is my skill is just pressure. I got to add the pressure, merge the pressure with the skill and grab the victory that night. And there's a big fight coming up in your division. Who do you think is going to win between Alex and Jamal? Hmm. That's a tough one. Jamal. How do you think he'll, he'll win? I think Jamal's um, his pace and his aggression is going to overwhelm Alex. And looking ahead at this year, what are your goals for the year? Just fight more. You know, fight more, learn more, and um, just keep building, you know? I can't, you can't be complacent in any sport, in any job, in any profession. So just keep working and keep acquiring more skills before I call it a career. When you mentioned you want to fight more, would three fights a year be good, four fights four a fight, year? Anything they could get me. Just, just, just stay busy, you know? Just, mm -hmm. I just want to stay busy. I don't have a lot of skills right now, but I'm acquiring more, but I need to continue to obtain that so I can continue to merge that with my, with my sport. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Hey, but thank you for taking the time. Yes, sir. I just want to touch on something you just mentioned with Amy. Uh, you know, you, you said that multi, uh, multiple times, more skills, more skills. Yes. And you're here in the biggest organization, surrounded by amazing talents like Uriah, but how do you stay grounded? Because a lot of guys kind of forget that white belt mentality and, and to be humble and be like, nah, I got it all figured out. How do you stay grounded and know you have to work on something and surround yourself with honest people that can tell you, like, this needs to be fixed ASAP? Hey, number one foundation is God. God keeps me grounded and he humbles me. So with that as my foundation, I can never be misled. Yes, sir. You have a, a big name in front of you. Um, how are you able to separate you know, Kenny, the, the, the fan, the, the person who, who loves this thing, from the combatant and the professional athlete. Because kind of like when Uriah fought Anderson Silva, it must have been like, a, wow, like that's a, that's a legend right there in front of me. Now you have a guy who fought for the belt. Is there anything mental that goes into that to separate, like, yeah, I'm a fan and you did great, but I, I want to be just as good if not better than you. So I'm going to have to, sorry, I got to step on you and get you out of the way. Oh, just because the guy's trying to separate me from consciousness. <laughs> so that's all I need. So, you know, keep me compelled to get the victory. So, you know, I'm just trying to win, I'm trying to pay the bills, help my family out, both my family here and my extended family back in Africa. Just want to help them out. So I have a lot of things to do. So I just got to go in there and get the finish. Yes, sir. And let me uh, follow up on that. How have you been able to use your platform as an MMA fighter, uh, a UFC fighter, especially when you're, you're holding down two, two families like that? to where some of us don't have that outlet, but you do. What have you done that we haven't seen or anything you want to express and, and use your platform as a fighter to bring attention to something specifically, even back home? Well, I use my platform just to praise God, you know. There's so many people that I do um, and enlighten, you know, and I never know. You never know who you're, um, who you're helping mentally, who might be dealing with some stress, distress somewhere else, and I'm, one, one thing I noticed when I went to one of the jiu-jitsu tournaments, I realized there was, there was three kids that approached me and asked me in to get the uh, to get a picture with me. And they told me that I helped them a lot get through hard moments in their life, and I didn't know that. But I guess the platform, the way I spread God's word and um, help talk about getting through things in life, hard circumstances, it helped people a lot. So that's all I want to use my platform for, to help promote people and encourage people to like go out there and strive for the best and don't feel complacent, don't become mediocre in life, just keep pushing.
did that take you back a little bit? Was it surprising us, obviously, that you're reaching people you didn't even know, making connections, inspiring folks and you're, while you're doing your job? Yeah, it's crazy, right? I mean, you never know until you know. So I know without knowing that I'm, I'm helping people, but I just got to stay consistent, stay disciplined, stay grounded like you spoke, spoke about earlier, and I'm stay humble. You know, that's all. Excellent. Thank you, sir. And Thank good you luck so on much. Early. You've always kind of been a, a quiet, almost shy sort of guy, you know. So when people coming up wanting to talk to you and tell your story, was that was that a little hard or awkward at first for you to have people come up and thank you for you being you? And no, I resonate with those people, you know. I'm just a human. There's nothing different from me than other people, a casual person. And um, I just got to use my platform to the best of my ability and promote and help people, uplift people. So at the end of the day, we're all going to die, you know. So <laughs> how's your story going to be told? So... Um, I want my story to be told in a more beautiful manner, knowing that I did help people. I wasn't selfish, and I was selfless. That's incredible. Yes, sir. When you look at this fight camp, did you bring anybody in to try to emulate OSP, or did you just go with the big bodies that were already there at the gym? Yeah, I have everyone I need. I have Alonzo, I have um, Span, Ryan Span, I have uh, Uriah Hall, and I mean, there's nothing else you really need there. You just got to dial in mentally and be able to absorb that information. Sometimes we feel like, like, we, like he said, we, we think we all have it all figured out, but we don't. So as you, if you stay in that student mode, you make a more measured approach in what you're acquiring in life. So I just stay disciplined, stay humble, stay consistent, and continue to learn from the vets. And I know you're always working on your striking, you're getting better and better, but I have yes, to think that the fight camp had to deal a lot with takedown defense. I imagine yes. you guys are planning that that's going to be a big goal of his is going to try to get you to the ground. We're just working on everything. Try to be a full range of martial artist, but we're working takedown, striking, and everything. You know, my striking, my takedown is not the best, but um, I'm learning. I'm still learning. I'm not quitting on myself. I'm still learning. That's all I have to do. That's all I. That's all. That's the only time I have to do. Yeah. Everything I do is just based on, on my spiritual life in Christ, and learning from the best of my teammates. I love to hear it, and. It, the belief in yourself from when you first started with the UFC in the beginning of, of your, your career here to now, how much more do you believe in your, yourself now from when you started? It's grown exponentially, you know. When I first started, I, was, I knew I was lacking a lot. So in my mind, I'm like, how do, how do I gain all this stuff I'm lacking, like, which is experience. You can't purchase that. So in my mind, it wasn't totally focused on, like, the media stuff. But it was focused on how do I acquire and obtain those skills and the experience. So I knew I had a lot to do, so I had to go through the trenches. So now I feel like I'm obtaining a lot, and I'm learning so much. And um, I still have more to learn. And I, I, the more I learn, the more comfortable I get, the more I see, you know? That's awesome. Last thing, uh, keys to the victory. What needs to happen to make sure that you get your arm raised on Saturday night? Be smart. Stay dialed in mentally. Utilize the game plan and um, implement it properly. Best of luck. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yes, I have a question. Uh, as a fighter, I have been in the game for so long now. We've seen you go through the ups and downs, the trials, the tribulation. I want to know, what title would you give this chapter in your life today? Man, <laughs> I don't know, man. Your right, eye is tripping. <laughs> he's, like he's always trying to put you on the spot. The accent's good. I'm like, bro. Good question. No, good question. Be Hollywood or something. But I tell him, let's go to Africa. He doesn't want to go. Oh, uh -oh. Well, I don't know. Man. He's getting the accent. Do you have a passport? Right? I'm just saying, I'm trying out for y'all's job. <laughs> That's a real black diamond right there. <laughs> Dynamite. Good shit. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. Thank you, Kenny. Appreciate you, bro.